Hi guys, Keith Darkberg Farms. It is now, uh, let's see, the last week of November. We're on Black Friday weekend. But today we're going to be going over the accounting spreadsheet we use for our farm. So let me show you. So this is a basic accounting spreadsheet that we actually developed for the farm. This will be on sale, um, parkenbergfarms.com. Go check it out, digital tools and training. Scroll down the bottom, there's a bunch of cool stuff down there. This weekend exclusively, which we are on Black Friday weekend, use code 50% Friday. And everything that is digital content is half off this weekend till the end of Monday evening. So go check it out. So this is a spreadsheet that we've developed. Pretty simple for use. We have a couple different tabs that we can look at. First one's got some directions on it, kind of tells you where it's at. Uh, it'll have a link to this video that will be posted in it, but if you found it, you already know where this video is at anyways. It's got two example data tabs as well. So this is some example data that I just took randomly from a completely different place and just kind of assigned it to kind of show you how the spreadsheet works and what we're actually doing with it. So this is our basic categorizing spreadsheet. Um, we have date table transaction number, which will come out of your bank account, or you can just assign in a number. Source of company, this came out of the bank account. So I just copied the data directly out of the bank account, and it gives you what it is, check, other charges, that kind of thing. Then we're at amount. Uh, of course, negatives are withdrawals, which are lower. And then uh, income is positive. And then on the other side down here is notes. You can annotate what it's for, how you're using it, or anything that you want in the future. The most important part is, so these cells here, you can copy in or manually input them. This column here is your notes that you manually input, and this is the most important part. You actually categorize each of your expenses into a different category. I basically have them set up to match a 1040F form, which is your farm tax form. So. It doesn't give you fully as clear of a picture of everything that's going on on your farm, especially in uh, vegetable production, but it'll make your taxes a lot easier. You can break down this a lot, lot more if you want to in the future, but that's really, really up to you. So next is the actual sheet that reads from the sheet we were on previously. Again, this is example data. So this is where you'll actually go in and change what your categories are. So I took these from the 1040F. These are all the different fields they have. Money out, of course, is negative. And then your money in, which would be your sales sources. You can redesignate these, call these whatever you want. Very simple. We'll just say sales farmers market. You can change it and add as many of these as you want. Just make sure that the money in is have this little bit of code here, which is very simple to drag and drop, or just fill in what's already there. You don't have to add anything to it. Same thing up here. So these are your other sources of income according to your taxes. I'm sure a lot of people have different sources. How far you want to sort your sources is really up to you. Down here at the bottom, it totals them. So it totals the money in, totals the money out, and gives you your profit loss top and bottom as well. Um, this is typical for a farm until you get late in the season. You will see a loss. Don't be freaked out by this. That's just the way farms operate. We have to put a lot of money up front, and then we get our money back slowly through the season. So we're slowly paying off all those upfront expenses throughout the season. So it's really not until late season that you actually see profit. Us, typically, we see our first profit about October, where we're finally into the green, and we are making money for the season, not just for the week. So let's jump over to the actual data sheet. Now this is where you will actually be inputting your data. So I took all of this, and these are not in the right column, so we'll go just get some sample data real quick. We'll just highlight this area. back to our data sheet and just paste in some data to work with. 
So again, this came directly out of the bank system. So you might have to arrange these columns after you download your data, or you can manually input it as well. Uh, let's say 1123, tab over, transaction number, well, let's just do the next one, 710, and this is going to be a sales. Now let's say we made $250 from our market this weekend because it was snowing. And then we just say market. That way we have a note of where it came from. You do not have to do that. So next comes your category tab. This is where all the stuff on the balance sheet reads from. So it has all of your different expenses and all of your different income sources. So we are going to say it's from sales. We just have source one. Again, it's reading from this balance sheet, which I did not change, as opposed to these other two that are actually linked together. So these two are linked together, and these two are linked together, which I'll show you how to copy them to make a new year here towards the end. So we've got our, this is now categorized as a sale. It's a positive transaction. So the next, we'll just say the $1,700 check. That sounds very expensive. That sounds like uh, we'll just do seed. So you can also type, and it'll narrow it down much quicker after you get the hang of what different categories there are. And then we got labor, because that's another expensive one. And then we can look through and insurance. You would actually know what these are because these would be your real expenses. I'm just kind of making this up on the fly so we can just kind of see what it looks like. Uh, next one, $240. Say we had to repair and change the fluids on, let's say, the van and get it doing better. This one actually says Johnny, so I know this is Seed. And Osborne, we got more Seed coming. Seed's getting very, very expensive this year already. And another one from High Mowing. And then we got a big check, 1600 Wow, oh, that's expensive. I don't even know what that will be for. Let's do this the other way and make this actually look funner. We'll change that amount to a positive amount. And we'll say that is sales. We'll just do source one for everything right now. Again, you can go through and change these as you'd like. And then we got a purchase from Agrigrow. It looks like we got some Ultra. Uh, that would be a fertilizer and lime. So your minerals and your applications for your field. So now I've got those in there. Again, if we want to put another one, 23. And that'll automatically put in the 23. 1711. This number you're putting in here on the transaction ID right here is actually a good thing to write on your receipt, or if you have a uh, deposit slip, that way you can go back and back check it later. This again is going to be a sale. We'll say sale from rester, I know I'm not gonna spell this right, front, I know that's not right. Say we had a big one, 225, and that is, uh, let's just say, well, we don't wanna say Johnny's, how about the feral house? Sounds like a fun place to go. And then we need to make that as a sale. We could do a sale from source one, which would just be general sales. Or again, we could do it, say, restaurant sales or wholesale. So we're actually going to choose a different source so we can keep track of that later. Then we move over to our balance sheet. Now the balance sheet is feeding from the data sheet. So it's taking all that information and actually sorting it into these different columns. Um, all the formulas are here to play with if you'd like. They can be moved around, done whatever with if you're good enough, or you can just lean like it is and change what these are actually called. I will tell you right now, before you start building this out, if you wanna change these categories, change them now before you start assigning stuff to them. Otherwise, you'll have to go back through and change them all later because it will not sum it back out of there. It, it cannot bring the data out. The drop-down list is made from this list of stuff right here. 
I can show you very easily. Like we have sales, source one. So this is our farmer market. Now since I just renamed it, see what happens? The total went away. That's because I do not have a sales of farmer's market over here. I have a source one, which it was originally called. You can even see the little error there. I'll show you here in a second. So type in sales. There's our farmer's market. See that little red thing? Invalid. That means it, that's not part of the drop down list anymore. You did something to change something. So we'll go back in here as well. Erase the last part of it, and then I'll bring up our three that are in the drop down. And farmer's market. There we go. Now it brings it back over here. Farmer's market source one. Source two is the restaurant, which we can change to say restaurant, just like we did farmer's market. But we really don't need to worry about that right now. This is a great thing about it. It adds up everything for you. I have all of the columns, again, from the federal tax form. This makes it very easy to divide stuff out. You can actually go back through and kind of change it later. There's always that other section on the tax form too, which would be like greenhouse or believe it or not, administrative really doesn't have a spot. Um, labor does not have a spot either. So you have to put that in the other category, but the rest of these are pretty much what it says. I did do a little bit of breakdown on supplies because we've got nursery supplies, which would be everything in our propagation house, uh, flats, trays, just all that stuff, just the physical stuff you have to have. Supplies for the field, which would be like row cover and plastic and insect netting, T posts, that kind of stuff. And then we got supply house supplies, which would be everything from bagging to boxes, um, any labels, anything like that. And then you got your selling supplies, which would be what you take to your farmer's market. You need new tent, you need tables, you need all that good stuff. That's the place to really, really record those. So the rest are pretty much all just straight from it. The supplies is the only one I really broke out. And you're more than welcome to break it out as well. I mean, there's plenty more. If you want to add more to this list, all you have to do is insert one row. And we have a blank. So we're just going to call this um, YouTube expense which this is actually separate from the farm, but either way. Now, if you notice here, there's nothing in this field. It is not gonna read anything. Click the one above it, grab the little thing in the corner, drag it down. Now it brought that formula down, works just fine. Easiest way to add something else in here. So now I have the option of categorizing something, even though there's nothing here. YouTube expenses. Right there. So it's just on the list. So it's a pretty easy spreadsheet. Works great. Um, again, it'll be over at arkenburgfarms.com. Uh, scroll down to the bottom, digital tools and training, be there available for download. Uh, we also have a bunch of other cool stuff down there. And again, because it is uh, the Thanksgiving weekend, Black Friday to the end of Cyber Monday, we have 50% off of all of our digital tools and training, all of our spreadsheets, all of the content there. Um, I will tell you site openers and t-shirts and license tags will be not be included in that. So go check it out. 50% Fridays. That's five zero, the percent sign Friday. Head over to arkenburgfarms.com. Check it out. So hope you all liked what we saw today. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank y'all. Have a good day.